It's fair to say that during the Civil Rights Movement, there were quite a few white people involved on the right side of history. Not a lot compared to African Americans, but their faces appear from time to time in photos and newsreel footage in support of the movement. One face that has gained notoriety over the past several years is a white Southern woman by the name of Joan Trumpower Mulholland. For full disclosure, she's also my mother. Her mugshot has been called one of the most iconic in American history, and the picture of her and the Jackson Woolworth sit-in from 1963 is the sit-in photo used most often in textbooks and museum exhibits. Joan's relationship with our frequent contributor to this series, LaVon Brown, is, is rather unique. It's an unlikely friendship that started, most understandably, with mistrust. In this episode of The Uncomfortable Truth, we're going to talk a bit more about that friendship and share a story that is alluded to at the beginning of the film when Joan says, you aren't going to tell that story, and LaVon replies, and we all made it out alive. It's a simple yet gripping story that seems almost unreal and something made up to sell movie tickets, but it is real. And what it means today is even more important for those who want to be a part of changing the narrative. This is Loki Mulholland, and it's time to get uncomfortable. Hello, LaVon. Hey, Loki, how are you? Doing pretty good. Well, we're back again, and and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about my mom here. Um, but now, for those who are just dropping in on this episode, I, I can't emphasize enough the need to either watch the Emmy-winning film *The Uncomfortable Truth* on Amazon Prime, or you can listen to it as a podcast. You might also want to watch the award-winning film about Joan Trumpower Mulhall entitled *An Ordinary Hero*. Okay, so so Levon, my mother is 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 this white girl, right? <laughs> well, uh, I just, Joan was one of those people that originally, uh, of course, I didn't trust her because, first of all, she was white. Secondly, mm-hmm. she was a white female. Mm-hmm. And they had gotten a lot of people killed or in trouble. White females, not Joan. Mm-hmm. White females had gotten a lot of people uh, locked up or, or whatever because they could always. Uh, talk about white womanhood. This mm-hmm. guy raped me, this guy did this. And they would often do that, actually, when they got caught messing around with the black guy. Right. Uh, uh, but Joan was one of those people that we had to teach uh, that all Southern black men, because it's mostly men, but to, mm-hmm. well, to, to Macomb, then there were a lot of women. But black people lived a different life than she did in in going up uh, in uh, in Washington or, or, or wherever she was because she was white. Yeah, and so we had to te- teach her that people would act differently around her because of who she was. Mm-hmm. So that was she had to learn that, and 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 she did. You know, she learned that she's not uh, initially one of the 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 women or one of the men. Or one of anything, because people will will treat her with distrust. Southerners will, right. northern men not so much. Northern women not so much, but southern men will because it's caused them to get killed. Right. So southern black men, southern black men. So I became, you know, a reluctant friend because we lived in this house, this this place in the middle of the black neighborhood. Joan came to live there. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying to myself, the, the police are going to come and raid this house. Mm-hmm. That was um, to myself. I'm saying it's not to her, to, to myself. And 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 they never came to the house. And this is called which, Freedom House, by the way. Yes, it is. It's called yeah. well, yes, it's called Freedom House. And Joan lived there, mm-hmm. but they never came to the house. So I'm going to tell you two things about Joan. Well, one was, I decided. Uh, to b- take a walk with Joe, mm-hmm. a walk, a walk, and uh, we were walking through the through the black neighborhood. Well, she had pressed you several times to do it, and you uh, kept dodging. This, yeah, absolutely, because I was with this white woman. Right, and finally you acquiesced. You're like, okay, obviously she's not going to stop. Let me let's go take this walk. Yes, and uh, we were, and to make a long story short, we were arrested. Well, we were picked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, for for walking down the street by you know uh, I was for, well, mainly it was me for walking with this white woman, right? And and 
So they took Joan to one room and me to another. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've pissed everybody off by walking with her uh, in a friendly manner. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not like we were not friends. We were friends. We were talking. We were walking. So they picked us up. The police car came and they took us to jail and they took Joan to one room and me to another. And the the uh, chief of police, not the captain, the right. the uh, chief of lieutenants, I guess he was, came into my room and said, what was I doing with this girl? And I said, because keep in mind, keep in mind that that suspicion of uh, there must be a sexual relationship, there must be something, right. was, in, when in, was in his mind. Right. So he came into the room, closed the door, and I said, I'm going to get the shit beat out of me in this room. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's what he's going to attempt to do. Because I'm right. going to, I have, in my, 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 in my head, I'm going to fight. Right. Now, Joan is in another room. I think she was with Captain Ray. I don't know. Uh, she told me, but I, I don't remember. So she's in another room explaining why the two of us are walking together. Right. And Joan was the kind of person who felt that, no matter what happened, she had a right to do this. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, so she's not helping you at this point <laughs> at all. Her, her strong headedness she, is going to get you she, both right. Go get us killed. Yeah. So they finally they 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 let us out, but out of different doors and at different times. Hmm. So they let, let 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 they let Joan out. So she had she you know she went back to Freedom House, and then they let me out. Uh, to go out into a different door. Right. And I, I said, so I talked to her later. I said, well, what happened? So she explained that they were talking to her as a, uh, a Southern white girl. What was she doing with me? That people from, uh, that black people would uh, attack us for being together. I mean, there was a, I, th I think she began to understand what right. was, what, what was, what was, what could happen. Right. So, but we didn't. We didn't get. We didn't get thrown in jail. Yeah. We did get arrested, but we didn't get. They just dropped the charges and sent us home. In my other life, I'm a filmmaker, and one of my more fascinating films I created is the award-winning film titled Black, White, and Us. It's about viewing racism through the lens of transracial adoptions in Utah. Utah? Yeah, Utah. It just so happens to be the transracial adoption capital of the world. So what happens when white families who didn't believe racism existed anymore adopts a black child? Find it on Amazon Prime or visit LokiMalholland.com to purchase a copy for your collection. In An Ordinary Hero, you say that she, she could have been like the rest of them, meaning white Southern women, right? She, she could have felt something and just ignored it and go on and live her life, you know, marry the right husband and get the right job and those sort of things. And but instead, she chose the courage of her convictions. Uh, she was she was brave. Yes, she was she was bold. Uh, yeah, a little bit too much at times. <laughs> <laughs> she was a woman ahead of her time, but sometimes she forgot yes. what she was and where she was, which was a white woman in the South, and for a black man, like you've said before, that could get you killed. Yep, and so. In particular, there's an incident that takes place, and you guys are driving back through the Delta. I think I think you guys were driving back from Tennessee, maybe yes. from Memphis, from a, a SNCC right. meeting. And it's four black men and a white woman in a car in the Delta at night. Yep. Now, we got pulled over. And well, well let's, let, let me put it this way. The, the 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 cop car was approaching us. Now, first of all, we were worried that we were black guys in the middle of the Delta. And then we, we're, talk, right. we're talking. Everybody's talking. So now we're saying, yeah. what are we going to do if if the guy stops us? Fortunately, he was... A so back up a moment here. You, you're driving down the road. It's the middle of the night. Middle of nowhere, which is the Delta. Right. And then suddenly a police car pulls up behind you. Correct. And pulls you over. Well, he, he was behind us at first, and we were talking about what are we going to do if he pulls us over? Because he was by himself. Okay. 
right? He's by himself. So he's got to pull over four guys. And he's got to depend on Mm -hmm. the four black people, that the people that he can see, responding to him as a white policeman. So he's got to be having talks with himself about, because he's by himself. Now, we're sitting in the car, we're in the car, and trying to decide what we're going to do if he uh, pulls us out of the car. And Joan Mm -hmm. is sitting in the middle of the back seat. So we got to figure out what to do with her because now we're scared because there's a white woman in the car. And keep in mind, we don't know what she's going to say. So we told her to put her head down. She says she doesn't want, she does, she's not going to do that. So it was either put your head down or you're going to get knocked out. We're going to knock you out. And she didn't want to do that. Why? Because it was wrong. Because she had a right to be a, a, a passenger in the car. This is what we were trying to explain. That might work for her. Well, that's what we spent a lot of time explaining to people that they may be right, but it's the wrong time to be right. Mm. And and so she was going to have harm done to her by us if she didn't do what we said. So it right. was put your head down, and we're going to cover you with this. Uh, uh, I think it was a blanket, but we had to cover mm-hmm. her hair and everything, and hope that we didn't have to move. Uh, meaning the cop didn't ask us to get out of the car. So he finally stops us. We pull over because he is a policeman and he's got our license number. And we're somewhere in the Delta. And so the cop says, what's wrong with your friend? Talking about Joan. And Mm -hmm. we said, well, she just got sick. Uh, We didn't say she. We said he just got a little too much to drink and he's not feeling well. So we, we're just right. letting him rest. And the cop just stood there shining his light on the blanket. Now, mm. he doesn't know that there's a person or booze or what, but he knows that the blanket is suspicious. Right. And so my friend who was driving, I forget who was driving, but he hands him his license and registration to the car. And this cop is, is this cop now is sitting there figuring out what he's going to do with us. So right. now, finally, he says, you can go. Now, that sounds like a, 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 a an order to move on, except for we are now saying he has a radio. And we right. don't know if he's going to call ahead to have us stopped again. And at the moment that, that, that we get stopped and we have to come out of the car is the moment that we start fighting. Because right. we know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. We don't know what's going to happen to her, but we know what's going to happen to us. Right. Uh, and uh, I think Curtis was in the car, and Curtis to this day will not speak to Joan. Now, he may be for that reason. Curtis uh, Hayes. Curtis Hayes. Okay. Uh, and if he doesn't, I don't know whether he does or doesn't. He doesn't go to snake meetings. I don't know. But. He, in a sense, he was right because her standing up and saying, I'm going to, I have a right to be here, was not the point. The point was we could all die. Right. Uh, and uh, she pretty much turned everybody off by this, this stance mm-hmm. of, uh, of uh, bravado because we right. understood that we could die. She didn't. Right. Uh, and and that she's one of those people that we had to teach. There's a way to get through the South, and this ain't it. So I want to jump back a little bit, real quick, though. Is, is what, what's what do you what do you think is going through the mind of this cop? I mean, well, what are we doing out in the middle of nowhere with five people in a car, and where are we coming from? Where, first of all, where are we coming from? Where are we going? And what the hell are we doing out there at this time of night? Right. That's what's going through his head. Who are we? But you're just you're, you're you're to him just four black people driving a car at night. I mean, what's the big deal? Well, no, <laughs> no. We were in the Delta in Mississippi. Where are we going? 
In his mind, there are four black people. They are not just people in a car. There are four black people that he knows of, five he thinks, in a car going somewhere in the middle of the night, right? We're not just driving. I mean, black people don't just drive going nowhere in the middle of the night, not in those days. Okay. Right? So we, who, 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 what we did, we just rob somebody? Was that what was under the right. blanket? Uh, so what were we doing in his mind? That's mm-hmm. I am sure that's what he was thinking. And the only reason we didn't have to get out of the car was because there were so many of us and we would have outnumbered him. Yeah. I remember you, yeah, it was like, it's like I might be able to shoot one of them, but I don't know if I can get all exactly. four. Exactly, which is why we were thinking, holy shit, we hope he doesn't call ahead and you have more policemen right. on, on, come out. But the, the thinking that we were just four people was not in his head. Right. Now, if, if it was four white guys driving in a car... He probably wouldn't have stopped. So, again, guilty from birth. Exactly. And that's what Mississippi was. Yeah. But now my mom, to jump back to this, this is kind of the point I want to illustrate, is that her... This is This is white privilege. She is not thinking about the consequences of anyone else. Now, she's, she thinks she is. She thinks she's being right because it's the civil rights movement. You guys are all up on this and exactly. stuff. Coming back from a SNCC meeting. Right. But she doesn't consider the consequences for anyone else. For instance, if what if she had just stood up, right, in the car and said, I've been kidnapped? Right. We're dead. Sure. Right. We don't. Any number of things could have gone, th- could have happened in that instance that would have gotten us killed. And I don't. But you know that she's not going to do that. No, but I understand that. But we are deathly afraid in the middle of the Delta. Right. I know she's not going to do that. Probably any, anybody knows that. If we, if we thought that, she wouldn't have been in the car. Right. So it's not that it had nothing to do with her. It had to do with the her color. Right. And even if she if she even if she didn't stand up and say I'm saying she could have done that. And she's off. Sure, sure. Or just being white and in the car could have gotten us killed. Could have gotten her killed. Right. But we definitely would have gotten us killed. Sure. But the fact remains is that she was strident in her in her position and her posture of we need to stand up against these abuses and it's like well yeah that's good for you but we're you know we're dead men walking right we were trying to tell her you can't do that because they will kill you or they will kill us right uh, so this is not the time this is not the time for you to stand up My work has taken me to a lot of places and I've been fortunate to meet some incredible people. But when I came to Selma and met Joanne Blackman Bland, I knew I was in the presence of greatness. Joanne was 11 years old when she was attacked on the Edmund Pettus Bridge on Bloody Sunday in 1965. She wasn't old enough to vote, but understood its importance enough to be there. After Selma is an in-depth look at how our right to vote has eroded since the signing of the 1965 Voting Rights Act, The fight for the right to vote continues. Get informed. You can find After Selma on Amazon Prime or visit LokiMulholland.com to purchase a copy for your collection. Now, most of us are not going to be in a situation today, uh, you know, those of us who are trying to, you know, trying to stand up. Right. Right. Trying to trying to be woke, trying to, you know, be allies, whatever the term people want to use. Right. We're never going to be in a situation where that's going to take place. But the lesson from this still applies today. And, and for me, when I hear this story, I think of broaden your understanding and think about the, the greater impact that you really need to check yourself. I mean, my mom is you know someone who's uh, dare use the term revered um, for her work in the movement. She's very well respected. Absolutely. Um, but she's human. Right. She grew up in America. Right. And even though you might have this, you know, I want things to change, like you said, you might be right. It just might be the wrong situation. 
the wrong right. moment to make that to make that move doesn't mean you're a coward or anything no. but recognize the situation recognize that what's okay for you might not be okay for for the rest of us right it, and we see that right even today people who think they're doing good but like well wait a second you know you just made things really bad for us right you 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 you, you can't act as if you know what I was what I was trying what I was saying earlier about you have to take your lesson from the people who live it right now now people going to vote I was one of those people I was well why don't people go down and vote and why don't people do this and why don't people do this mm-hmm. you no know, black people right and I was angry that they didn't mm-hmm. you know people have come from miles to help us out and you people. Well, I didn't understand quite that they were in a different place than me. Right. And they didn't want to lose family members. They didn't want to lose their jobs. jobs. Right. They didn't, there's a lot they couldn't do because uh, I wanted them to. Right. They, they couldn't do it because they wouldn't have anything to eat or they wouldn't have a place to live. And that's all that people were trying to tell Joan right. or, or Bob or Bob Moses was what he, we had a situation with him. Hmm. Where we went to a, a stand to get something to drink, right? And was out in the middle. I don't I don't know where we were. Hmm. And Jesse and I were traveling with them. And Jesse, the guy said, "If you Jesse Harris, right. if you want something to drink, go around back and I'll give it to you." Hmm. So Bob stands there trying to tell the guy how we are, who we are, and we have a right to come to the front. And Jesse and I are trying to tell him, Bob, let's go. Right. This is not this is not the place. This is not the fight you want. No, because we stand there long enough. You can bet he's going to call his friends. Right. You can bet on it. Because if we stand there, because we're arguing. Right. We're saying we belong here. We Over a soda? No. Now you're getting uppity, you know. Well, that's what, that's what he was thinking. So we were try, so trying to tell people that, yes, you want to fight, but pick your fights. Pick them so that they mean something. Okay, so so let me, let me, let me and I'm glad you brought that story about Bob Moses, not that it gets my mom off the hook for being white and so forth, but this is not so much, there's definitely layers that, that involve color and, and so forth and gender um, that are unique to my mother's situation, but this is a, a cultural misunderstanding. Yes. In respects, you know, like obviously with Bob Moses, hey, you know, what what flies in New York ain't going to fly down here. Exactly. Um, and so for us who who want to help, talk, you know, talk less and listen more. And listen, listen to understand. Talk, yeah, talk to the people that are living it. Now, right. you may not, you may not accept all that they say. So I didn't accept people not voting. Right. But I understood that they were going to have to do something. So now I can, we can have a conversation. It's not what I say. It's let's do this together. Mm-hmm. So let me understand where you're coming from. Now I understand. So now we can we do X? Right. So a lot of people didn't mind being arrested, myself included. Mm-hmm. I didn't mind that. Uh, but I was not going to be – so I was not going to be arrested – for driving through the Delta at late at night. Right. There's no point. You're not going to escalate the opportunity for, for getting killed. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what is that going to do? Right. So I'm dead. I'm a martyr. So everybody talks about me once a year. <laughs> right. Right. I don't need that. But there were a lot of people who, and once people stayed there, even your mother, especially your mother, mm-hmm. who stayed there, who understood now, when people were talking about don't do this, do this, you you still mm-hmm. end, up, end up in the same place. Just take your time doing it. Right. Emmett Till was killed because he, in theory, whistled at a woman. Whistled. Right. He couldn't do anything. He was in the middle of a of a of a gas station or whatever it was, a, a store. Yeah, yeah, grocery store. Right. Yeah. So he didn't. It didn't. It, it, they would kill you for no reason. Mm-hmm. Especially this false narrative they had about the white woman. That was what, right. what what Joan stepped in the middle of without realizing it. 
Mm. Right? Yeah. Right? Without realizing it. So, but now she does. Now she knows. And, you know, she learned right. then as well. Us walking down the street and being arrested for it never crossed her mind, mm-hmm. except for it's, we should have a right to do that. Right. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but, do yeah. <laughs> but do we want to? Obviously we did, but you understand what I'm right. saying? So uh, we had a lot of that. Yeah. A lot of that went on in the movement. So I mentioned Bob Moses for a reason, because I, we tried to explain to Bob, Bob, I knew you're angry about this, and you're not going to the back. We're with you on that. So let's leave. Right. Standing here arguing with this guy is not accomplishing anything. Right. Because he's not going to give you anything to drink. If, if anything, he's going to, you know. He's yeah. going to call his buddies. Call his buddies. Because, yeah. Well, of course, because now he's afraid. There are three people. Right. Standing there, three black people, mad at him for not giving them a drink, who obviously are not going to the back to pick up their drink. Yeah, and he's been raised on a diet that, you know, black men. They'll beat him up. Right. They go into the back. There's something wrong with them. I got to call my buddies. Right. You know, so it's a mindset. Yeah. You know, there's a reason why even in New York, black men will tell their their kids, you know, to be careful when they're stopped by the police. Mm -hmm. To this day, they do that. Now, some of that is residual. Right. But some of it is real. Sure. Because you don't know which cop is going to stop you. Now, I've been stopped by the police several times. Mm-hmm. And they've always been they've, they've always been polite. But they are people who've been stopped by the police and they're dead. Right. Right? Because we don't know where they recruit. We don't know what the cop is going to do. Just right. like we didn't know what this cop in Mississippi was going to do. Yeah. Now, the chances of you dying... Or were greater then than they are they are now, but you don't know. But the chance is still a chance. Absolutely, and a white person will argue, will you know, say, "Why are you stopping me?" Blah blah blah, without with impunity. An ordinary hero was my first award-winning documentary. It's about the life of my mother, Joan Trumpower Mulholland, and her participation in the civil rights movement. For most of us, our mothers are heroes because they're mothers. And mom is just mom. But when your mother is a civil rights icon, and yet you never really knew it, things change. Go check out An Ordinary Hero and find out how choosing to do what was right instead of what was easy helped change the world. You can find it on Amazon Prime or visit LokiMulholland.com to purchase a copy for your collection. So in Utah, we, which is where I live, right, and we... Um, we uh, we have these really weird uh, overpasses. So while you, as you come off the off ramp, you know you can peel off to the right and keep going, right. or you can stop at the light and turn left. But as you turn left, you're actually going with the flow of traffic. Okay, it's it's this real real crazy thing. It's like all of a sudden the right lane is now the left lane, and it, and it works yes. for the flow of traffic. But it's so confusing to people. They had to put signs up that said, "Must basically, it's like you must yield to through traffic. You must stop on red and yield right. to through traffic. So, Because clearly, typically what would happen is, obviously, if you come up to a, 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 a light, you could stop and you'd yield it through traffic if you're turning right. You would never turn left because now you're cutting across traffic. Oh, I, right. Here, right. you're going with the flow of traffic to the left. It's really confusing um, initially. So they had to put all these signs up, two or three signs, as a matter of fact, explaining this. Hey, you know, stop at the red light, then you can turn left. Okay. So this is this was really new when this happened. So I pull up to the to the light, it's red, and I pull up right next to a cop. And I'm going, you know what? I'm gonna go. I made sure it was a complete stop, had my turn signal on, looked to the right to make sure there was no traffic coming, and then went and turned. Cop pulls me over. He said, do you know why I pulled you over? I said, no, I have no idea. He says, you turned, you turned left on a red light. I said, yeah, you can't do that. I said, yes, I can. The, sti- the signs say it. He says, we're not going to argue about this. Mm. And my reply was, well, good. There's nothing to argue about. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, 
at that point, what would happen to you? Well, first, I'd, uh, if it was bad enough, I'd get taken to jail or a ticket would be, I, I would definitely get a ticket. Right. And I might be taken to jail. Stepping out of your car, please, or all this sort of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, ask for my license registration. Not a problem. He goes back to his car. And now he's going to phone it in to find out who's right. Oh. Because he doesn't know. He clearly does not know. Right. He comes back, hands me back, you know, my license and registration, says, you, you know, you're free to go. Right. No apology. You know, nothing, nothing of that sort, right? No explanation. But you're free to go. But I knew I was right. Right. And I knew that later on I reflected on this. You know, later on I reflected that, you know, if if any of my black friends did that, the outcome would have been different. Oh, totally. But they but they would have already known not to even try to pull that stunt. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Which is fascinating to think about. Um, There's so you know, much. That's privilege. That's so much. That's exactly what it is. There's so much that goes on daily that you almost got to hear it from somebody else to know what it is. So when you start talking or doing, it's not so that you stop doing it. It's just that you know. Mm-hmm. The guy that I study martial arts with, one of the guys that was, now he duped a cop all the way into his garage. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he just The cop was following him, and he made a turn, and he was he came home. And he got out of yeah. the car and, stuck, and was arguing with the cop. He had the sergeant there, the whole bit. And he was smart enough to say, if I was a black guy, I wouldn't have done that. Right. But to say wasn't, you know, he's over six feet, but he's big. But his point was that we wouldn't have gotten away with that. Right. You know, but but so he, he knows that from, well, actually he has a lot of friends who are black, but he knows that just from living, and being where he is. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people who go into the South don't know that. Right. Uh, they they want to be right. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that was, that was the problem then. I think it's slightly different now. A lot of people have moved back there. They live there now. Um, so I think it's, it's better than it used to be. Sure. Uh, but it, that kind of, of thinking is residual. People, yeah. people, Carry it with them. Now, now, now. In the end, you guys make it out safely. There's not another police stop. Thank God there isn't. But, but then, you get back to the office, or you know, or you know, Freedom House, whatever it was that you guys went to, and and you guys got, uh, yeah, I don't want to say you got read the riot act, but uh, you were called out on it. Well, yeah, because what we did was. Uh, Basically, we there were five people's lives at stake. Yeah, and there were five, and the movement would have lost five people for no reason. And I think that was the only reason we, we were told. Actually, we were told to be that we had to be more careful than that, which was true, especially in the Delta. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. And that uh, we had no business driving at night when we couldn't see. That was another thing, right? Because you're driving at night. You don't know who's going going to show up, and you have to go through these little towns. Mm. And we didn't have highways; mm. we had small roads, um, and so we were basically—I wouldn't say we were read the right act. We were told that we were what we did was wrong, and how we did it was wrong. Of course, we didn't we didn't have, right. we didn't have to get told that after we had been stopped. But, <laughs> you know, it was right. like we got it. We, we, we will never do that again. What what year? Do you remember what year this was, by the way? Uh, I, I imagine it was sixty two. Okay. Uh, yeah, probably um, wasn't sixty two. Want a great way to help a worthy organization and educate children about the civil rights movement? Visit our foundation, the Joan Trumpower Mulholland Foundation, at the jtmfoundation.org. That's the jtmfoundation.org. T H E foundation.org we are a 501c3 established to help end racism through education a five dollar monthly recurring donation will provide curriculum for 30 students as my mother used to say i can't do everything but i can do something because doing nothing is not an option if you have wanted to help in this cause but didn't know how now you can 
the Joan Trumpower Mulholland Foundation, at the jtmfoundation.org. So it's an early lesson for my mom. She arrives in 61, in, in, in June of 61. June 8th is right. actually um, on the Freedom Rides. And after that, so after this incident, you still have the Jackson World War sit-in. There's still other things that are taking place that she's involved with and so forth. Uh, did you see a, Did you see the shift in her? Was there a shift in how she conducted herself after that? Uh, was, was she willing to learn? She was will- Or was there this, still the self-righteous indignation, if you will? Of there whatever. was both. But she had... She did learn. She learned that what you know. She she learned that when people said that, that you know don't do something, not to do it. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, she did learn that. I mean, her her her, her self righteousness did go, did not go away, but it became situational. She knew that the people who lived there knew how to stay alive. So she would. Is self righteous the right term? Is that the right thing to say about her? I mean, I don't know. I mean, well, her stubbornness, her. I, I I don't know what you would call it. It was just she just felt that uh, if you were if you were doing stuff for freedom, if you were that you act like you were free. She was very absolute. So I think that yeah. that was uh, you know that was the problem, uh, and and she learned yeah. situational how to be in situations. I better ask. How to how to act, how to be, who, uh, because failing that, she, you know, she she was, I don't know. I, to me, she was headed for trouble, right? Uh, and because she was not be accepted by maybe the white the, the black women would accept her, but certainly not the men, right? And certainly not the white the 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 white men or the black men, because we had to by white men I mean the people from Mississippi. Uh, right. And it was she would have been cut off from a lot of the men in the movement, which basically ran things. Mm. Uh, right. Uh, so she had to learn. Right. Um, and it was just getting it was getting too dangerous. I mean, my understanding was that she was not really allowed back into the Delta. Uh, no, she was not allowed in Delta at all. Um, right. No, good, at no. all. And Joyce Joyce Ladner, her roommate. Um, would if they were driving at night, leaving Tougaloo College's campus, she always had a black scarf to put over Joan's head. Right, you need because she was like, I don't want you know, I, she's like, I don't want to get killed. Yeah, that that'll teach you quicker than anything else. Yeah, but so so at the end of the day, I mean, it's so if you're going to be involved, I mean, I guess the lesson I want to take away from this then is is you know, hopefully share is that you know, if, if you're going to be involved, listen exactly. It's the same. It's the same problem that's going on with a lot of black people now and white people. Uh, the people that really want to help mm-hmm. don't first talk to the people that are living it, right? Because they know how to live it. You may know how to change things, but they know how to live it, mm. and and that's the difference. And a lot of white people have learned that. A lot of the kids have learned that, right? Uh, uh, because it's not the way you think it is. It's not because they elected a black guy as president, racism still exists. Right. Uh, it's not because you attack a certain policeman that you think all policemen are bad. So right. it's it's the people who live it that you have to listen to. But some of them, most of them are right. They know what it's like. Then you make a decision what you're going to do next. Your America is not my America. No, it's not. You learn. Yeah, your experience is not my experience. Never. Yeah. Well, thanks, Levon. My pleasure. I, it was uh, it was interesting. Yeah. Well, well. You know, luckily, my mother doesn't listen to podcasts, so you're, <laughs> you're safe. Well, I, I, I think we could we could play this one for. Let's see what she says. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you really yeah. want to do that? Let's see what she says. No. All right. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want that discussion. All right. All right. All right. All right. (laughs) Until next time. I will talk to you. Thank you again for listening. Make sure you head to my Patreon page at patreon.com/slash Loki Mulholland. Show a little love if you can, and get access to even more content. Until next time, don't be afraid. 
to get uncomfortable. 